lifted his face up to the sky, said, I am coming home now, Father, to you. The reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips. He drank his last and gave his soul to glory. Good morning. Sorry, uh, trying to take my cue. I'm in the a little behind this morning. Don't adjust your set at home if you're watching this now or later. This is the real color of my shirt. This is not a distortion. You know, I like. Uh, I think Easter's great. We get to spend time with family. Get to see a lot of people maybe we haven't seen in a while. It's also a day I don't have to dress myself because my wife helps me with that and gets me ready. So <laughs> maybe there are others in the room that want to raise your hand, show some strength in numbers. There, okay. So, thank you. I will be needing a ride home afterwards, so if you could <laughs> contact me based on that eye that I just got. So, uh, we certainly welcome you. Glad to see everyone. Uh, happy Easter. It's good to see everyone getting out today in colorful shirts like this. Um, you know, lots of announcements here, but, you know, we've got a lot of things coming up. Uh, CPR class is coming up April 30th. Just, again, want to get some people that are interested in that. We've got uh, Jason's willing to host that. We're up to about 10 or 11 people now, so we got a good group there. That's just something that'll be, you know, useful uh, going forward. But some immediate things today. We have uh, 
you know, obviously our Easter service afterwards immediately we'll have an Easter egg hunt. Uh, that is for young and old, I've been told, so you can self-identify if you're young or old. So uh, be, be willing to participate in that. Uh, I believe there are 700 eggs hidden, so <laughs> we'll be finding a few of those with a mower, I'm sure, in the next coming months, so uh, that, that'll be fun. So uh, that's coming up. Next week, of course, we've got a business meeting for those that are uh, members here. You know, afterwards, we'll follow the service next week. Uh, and this, just take this opportunity, you know, VBS is coming up this summer. We'll be here fast and furious uh, June 12th, which is just around the corner. Uh, but, you know, given the group that we have here, lots of people here maybe we haven't seen in a bit, just uh, something that we've got coming up. It's first annual this year. Um, man, I'm shaky today. There's a lot of people making me nervous or something. That's not. Um, John Lester has kind of put this together and helped. It's a big thing. It's a first thing for us. It's a car show and catfish that we're going to do uh, May 6th uh, as a fundraiser for some things for our youth to go to camp, as well as some mission opportunities, looking at doing some things uh, there. So uh, certainly welcome you to come back and visit for that May 6th. There'll be a car show out here, lots of people. I think we're gonna have some music, uh, food, uh, some uh, auctions, live auctions, and things like that. So we certainly welcome you. He's done a lot, uh, probably others as well, but a lot of people have gone into, uh, John's done a lot of things to get that organized. He even got a cool logo there. So I'm gonna get him to make my next T-shirt. So um, certainly welcome. Uh, you to come to that in a few in a few weeks. Uh, we do have a video at the end of the service. We're going to have an Annie Armstrong uh, uh, offering that we'll take up, and I think we've got a little short, brief video that we're going to uh, do. But one thing they'll probably talk about it. I, I pulled some things just uh, you know for those that aren't aware. Annie Armstrong Missions is for North America Southern Baptist Associated uh, Church planting. Uh, since 2010, they've uh, planted more than 9,400 churches. You know, I know a lot of times these things, people are like, where's my money going? You know, I'm writing a check. Is it really going to something? For them, 87% of their uh, funds received go to church planning, 9% evangelism and compassion ministry, 3% sending and leadership, and 1% missions education. So you can see that 100% of your money is going to good use. There a big portion that obviously is uh, for North American church planning. There you have uh, 9,400 churches planted in the last uh, 13 years in North America, so that's a great thing. So, and uh, I guess we're ready for a video. They see him here. They see him here. And they see him here. We know it because he said it. Jesus said, the world will see him when the world sees us. That's why together we do this. We give so that those who've not yet seen can see. It means something when the world sees how we give. It means something because we do not look the same. It means something because we do not sound the same. It means something because when we give, this is what the world sees. They see the gospel doing what the world cannot. They see the gospel making us one. And so we give. We give so that missionaries can go. We give so that churches can be started, hurts can be healed, and truth can be shared. We give so the world might see Jesus in us, united, united as one. Pray about how you may help with missions and giving this year for Annie Armstrong and helping send out those to fulfill the Great Commission. All right. Well, uh, today's scripture, we're going to talk about the Great Commission. And if you are willing and able, I ask that you would stand for the reading of God's Word. We're in Matthew chapter 28, starting with verse 1. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake, because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his robe was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken from fear of him 
that they became like dead men. But the angel told the women, don't be afraid because I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been resurrected, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead. In fact, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, I have told you. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, what a day of thankfulness and rejoicing of joy. Thank you, Father, for sending the perfect lamb, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Father, we are gathered here today to celebrate that, celebrate life. Thank you for making a way. We pray, Father, that during this service that we would just give you our whole hearts, come here to worship you alone, Father. Be with us as we leave here and then give us the boldness, Father, to go and proclaim the gospel to the community and make a difference there. As we lift up worship to you, Father, I pray that you find it acceptable. And all that we do in word and deed, may it glorify you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Remain standing, please. We'll sing.
sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope, with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains And my orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so free washes over. the worship team up here. Aha. <clears throat> Y'all are welcome to 
sing about this song. Ask God's blessing on the offering.
hear me now. There we go. All right. <laughs> Beautiful song. Beautiful song. We, we are joyful that he rose from that third day and that he will come back again for us. Amen. Amen. Today's message, I'm sorry. Oh, Children's Church. Sorry. Kids, you are now dismissed to Children's Church if you will follow Miss Valerie. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, today's message is called Fear Only One. Fear Only One. Just days after Christ's resurrection, he gives the disciples some, some last words of, of wisdom and instruction, what we know as the Great Commission. Several years before, when he first called his apostles, he gave them instructions to, to send them out, right? So we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 10 today for these instructions that he gave them. Matthew 10, starting in verse 16. And we're going to read through 28. Matthew 10, verse 16. He says, look, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as serpents and as harmless as doves. Because people will hand you over to Sanhedrins and flog you in their synagogues. Beware of them. You will even be brought before governors and kings because of me to bear witness to them and to the nations. But when they hand you over, don't worry about how or what you should speak. For you will be given what to say at that hour, because you are not speaking, but the Spirit of your Father is speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will even rise up against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be f delivered. When they persecute you, you are in one town, escape to the other. For I assure you, you will not have covered the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher or a slave above his master. It is enough for a disciple to become like his teacher and a slave like his master. If they called the head of the house Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household... Therefore, don't be afraid of them, since there is nothing covered that won't be uncovered and nothing hidden that won't be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. What you hear in a whisper, proclaim on the housetops. Don't fear those who kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell." Gracious Heavenly Father, may we open our minds and hearts to what you have to tell us this morning. Father, it may be you speaking here, not me. You get all the glory, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So what are some things that you fear most, that you're afraid of? Maybe it's a rejection, failing at a task. Maybe it's something a little more concrete, like a copperhead or a spotter. <laughs> Maybe it's fear of death itself or the pain leading to it. Jesus tells us to overcome these certain fears that will come. One thing we learned from this text is that persecution will come. Notice he says, when it comes. Persecution will come to those who live out their lives for the Lord and proclaim the gospel. Verse 17 and 18, you will be delivered to courts and flogged in their synagogues. And then in verse 22, you will be hated by everyone because of my name. Verbal abuse. 
We don't have a record of very much persecution of the disciples before Jesus himself uh, was flogged in the court of Pilate a couple years later. But without a doubt, seeing the Lord beaten and crucified gave them strength to bear these persecutions that were come that they would experience in years coming. We gain our strength through the cross. The disciples let her see that hostility will culminate in Christ's crucifixion. The hostility will culminate in Christ's crucifixion. Now, in some countries today, you know, Christians are still being either thrown in prison or, or, or killed for sharing the gospel. Um, just one example here I want to share. In 2018, Pen Yang Guang, pastor of the Shizen Holy Reformed Church, signed a statement along with 456 other house church pastors and his friend Wang Yi, who led a 500-member home church to protest against the increasing persecution of Christians. Later that year, the authorities arrested Wang and about 100 members of his church during a Sunday service. Wang was tried and convicted in 2019, receiving a nine-year prison sentence to the charge of subversion of state power. Now, there's an organization called Open Doors USA, which monitors the persecution of Christians in over 60 countries. They estimate that China has more than 97 million Christians, many of whom worship in unregistered or illegal underground house churches. Churches in Texas have taken in some of these Chinese churches escaping persecution. And them coming to Texas, they call it the Mayflower, hence the, the boat coming, the ship coming. So, you know, in our area, we aren't necessarily seeing the persecution like this. But the day, I think, is going to come. Today, for us, it's more of a verbal abuse, which itself can be very, um, be effective, uh, affecting the, the Christian church. Secondly, we learn from this text, don't fear men. Verse 28, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. In this life, so in this life of course, body and soul are, are closely united, and God will eventually reunite them in the resurrection body. But he goes on to say in the next verse, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. He says in the Greek, Apollosai kai, puxen kai soma in genegiene, both soul and body in hell. Who is him that has this power? God is the only one that has this kind of power. Some may immediately think that it is Satan because of the word destroy in hell in this verse. However, Satan has no more power than what God has given him. Charles Spurgeon wrote, He who fears God has nothing else to fear. We should stand in such awe of the living Lord that all the threats that can be used by the proudest persecutor should have no more effect upon us than the whistling of the wind. Man in these days cannot do so much against us as he could when the apostle wrote this verse. And Spurgeon refers to Hebrews 13.6 here. We can, can, we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So if God alone has the power to destroy both the soma, the body, and puxe, the soul, then that should put fear in us. which is the third point of this script of this passage, fear God alone. I want to spend a little more time on this, fear God alone. Throughout the Old Testament, mostly among the patriarchs, if a man was, was righteous 
And it said that he feared Elohim. He feared God. The great men in the Bible feared the Lord Elohim. What does this fear mean? Like, what, what kind of fear is this? The Hebrew word used for this fear in the Old Testament is yara. It means to fear, to, to respect and reverence for. It is a good kind of fear. A note I read in the study, by, study Bible defined it this way. The fear of God is an attitude of respect, a response of reverence and wonder. It is the only appropriate response to our Creator and Redeemer. This, this word, yara, is used over 300 times in the Old Testament in reference to God and fear of God. So having a fear of God is evidently something the Old Testament writers wanted to highlight and not something to be taken lightly as the repetition of it. We also see it in the New Testament. Acts 9.31 so the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. And we see an example in this in the New Testament about those under sin, the not righteous, those that are not following God's word. In Romans 3, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, the fear of God develops from these things. I'm going to list a few things here. The fear, the fear of God begins with wisdom. Proverbs 1 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see, by nature, in sin, in these fleshly bodies, uh, we do not have wisdom. You may have knowledge of the world, as the world describes it, but not a godly wisdom. So it's but through knowing God and His Word and fear of God, we can gain wisdom. And with that gaining of wisdom brings blessings if we act upon that wisdom. Put that into practice. Also, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Proverbs 8, the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance in the way of evil and perverted speech, I hate. If you have been washed in the blood of Jesus and sins forgiven, you should hate the things that destroy you. In the previous life that you once lived in the flesh, the things that destroy you, the enemy, Satan, wants nothing more to destroy you. That is his purpose. We must hate that evil and turn from it. Also, to fear God is to love God. I think it's appropriate to ask, how can we love someone that we fear? Let's think on this kind of relationship. Maybe let's call God uh, Father. Let's think of him as a parent. If the child gets out of the line, that child is disciplined. And out of care and love for your child, a parent will discipline them, save them from burning hell. Likewise, us big kids are disciplined by a loving Father God. And we already talked about having a fear of God is to hate evil. Paul says later, he does the things he hates. He's talking about sinning, which he doesn't want to do. He knows what's right, but... He, he doesn't do the things he wants to do. Then we, being the children of God, should naturally love him for correcting us. Even though that correction is painful often. And having the fear of God keeps us from doing the evil that we, believers in Jesus Christ, should hate. The fear of consequences should keep us from being evil. It says in the Psalms that when you correct a wise person, he is glad and he, he accepts instruction and correction. But the fool despises correction. So the fear of God is loving God. This is far from being the contradiction that one might think at first glance. 
God loved us so much as his children that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Amen. Also, the fear of God is fleeing to Christ in fear. The fear of God is fleeing to Christ in fear. We cannot understand what Christ did on the cross unless we understand having a fear of God. The sinner must be terrified. We must be terrified by the God who can rain down fire and brimstone on a city. Seeing what Christ did for us on the cross should make us tremble. We should tremble in his presence that he will receive us, forgive all our sins, and give us an everlasting future. So many people do not fear their carnal departures. They don't tremble. Many Christians today don't fear God enough because they may think, you know, I'm, I've been saved. Um, I've asked forgiveness for my sins. And I'm good. I'm just to ride on out. <laughs> However, some use this fact as an excuse to feel okay about sinning. A Christian who takes sin lightly because the fact Christ dying for their sins can be likened to an abuse of a power that you may have. The author of Hebrews wrote this about the subject. Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 26. For if we deliberately, deliberately sin after receiving knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and a fury of fire about to consume the adversaries. If anyone disregards Moses' law, he dies without mercy based on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think one will deserve who has trampled on the Son of God? regarded as profane the blood of the covenant by which he has sanctified and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know the one who said, Vengeance belongs to me, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We cannot make sense of the Bible if we don't say, that obedience of the commandments is the way to live. In constant repeating, uh, constant repenting of failures and confessing our sins. So the good news is that you put your faith in Christ Jesus. You believe God sent him to die on the cross for your sins. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. And you have nothing to fear except God himself. Death could not hold him, was written later in Acts. And because of Jesus, you don't have to fear about death because he has died for your sins and you have an eternal home in heaven. And likewise, death will not hold you either. You are obedient to his word. Amen. That's why we celebrate today. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we, we thank you so much for the cross. Thank you so much for a way of sending the way, the truth, the life to die on the cross for our sins. Father, I pray that there's anyone here this morning who does not know you as God, does not fear you, and does not know your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray that they would come and make that decision to follow you this morning. If there's someone here that has kind of been saved and, and they're kind of backslidden and they've gotten kind of lazy at following and taking your, your commandments uh, more seriously, I pray that they would make that commitment today, Father to turn their life around, recommit to you, and fear you, Father, knowing that you are a loving God. Then as we leave here, Father, may we go and boldly proclaim your gospel to the world. 
a world that is so lost. And maybe, maybe as we go out here, we have compassion on those that are lost. Use us, Father God, to share with them, to share what you have done for us. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
special blessing upon her and her family. This testimony that she bears this morning is her faith in Jesus. And just, I would be just praying now that you need to in her life. In Jesus' name. Father, we lift this up to you just as the <clears throat> testimony she's having in the years that she's been through the struggle. We know that this is the family has always stepped in and just Sought your will, she turned it over to you many years ago, and we just lift her up to you now. We know that uh, while we at times may have weakened faith, we just seek you now, and just knowing that you are in control, you can help her by, you just give her the, the, the strength to keep going, and to seek you and continue to have faith in you, and seek you, and just uh, the lives around her, and those that are impacted by that testimony. Father, we just lift up uh, a case like this in our family. Father, we know that uh, through all things in life, we understand that you are provider for that. We petition. We, we just uh, petition for your, your strength as we celebrate today.